Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video that I'm putting together here, it's part of the series where we're going from Earth all the way out to Jupiter with the goal of landing on Io. And since the XR2 that we took off from KSC isn't capable of making this entire journey, at least not without uh, going in and dialing down the config settings to make it uh, to make the fuel last longer and to make the locks last longer. So without doing any of that, uh, the only option we have is to have some kind of hauler vessel that'll take us the uh, long distance out to Jupiter. And again, I'm fortunate enough to be able to uh, kind of beta test this uh, aero freighter. Uh, but uh, as, again, at the time of this recording, it's not available for general download, so I can't put a link in the description, unfortunately. All that said, let's jump back into the flight and get underway. So switching camera views, getting inside the aero freighter, and... It looks like it looks like I lost my um, my plan here from one save to the next. Um, eh, that's okay. It, it wasn't like a complex plan, so let's go through the variables. Here we are, planets, moons, and we're just going to select Io, and we'll go forward on that side to view the encounter. And on this side, we have a closest approach of 149. Um, M. So before we go any f any further forward, let me just tap translation. the translation thrusters to see uh, what I can do here to bring that down. So it looks like uh, relative to however my vessel is currently positioned, I'm using what would be outward. And that's having a quick effect. And up down's not doing anything. Forward, backward's really small. So it looks like uh, just a bit of inward or outward rather, is going to do most of the work for us. And holy cow, look at that encounter velocity. That is a huge encounter velocity, 11,000 meters per second. Wow, okay. I guess that's the situation we got ourselves into, so let's go with that. All right, we're 27 days away from our encounter, so let's warp time forward. And let's uh, let's cut it roughly in half, so let's go out to 604.13 as our plan falls apart. So 7, 8, 9... And that's 13. And we, uh, I, th I think I must have a bunch of angular velocity. I do. I'm not sure. Hmm. That's happened a couple times now, but anyway. I, I don't know if it shows up in the video playback, but I can see. Let me show you what it looks like on the outside. So, so you can see how the aero freighter is just spinning aggressively. And that little bit of time warp we did there, I don't know how it picked up all that angular velocity. But I'm just going to edit the vessel angular velocity and you see we have it looks like we just have a huge Z movement but anyway we're gonna kill it and apply and I think I'm just gonna leave that open but now you can see when we look at the outside you know we're not spinning like crazy so anyway 60413 looking back at my let me put this down out of the way oh yeah and I noticed in the video playback that uh, my camera was sometimes blocking what I was doing so I'll try to be more careful about that and that sucks because that was like in part of the planning too, so. Alright, so uh, trying the same velocity that I did before, although now I'm probably oriented completely differently, so. So that's helping a little bit. So now it looks like it's mostly inward and forward translation. And with just a touch of up-down translation. So that's no longer helping in that direction. So now, now it looks like it's mostly a forward translation based on however my vessel's currently oriented. And that only helps to a point. And now that's going the wrong way. So let's go with this one. So I'm just trying to do this rather than take the time to set up a maneuver. As we get closer in, we might go through the motions of setting up the maneuver. But for now, I think we can do most of this just with a little bit of guesswork. And since I'm just using translation thrusters, you know, it's not like we're burning 
a lot of DV here. You know, I'm guessing this is maybe five so far. All right, so there we are. We're back, and now dialing down the minimum altitude. Minimum altitude. Let me come back over here and retarget the base because I did lose that information. And now we have our base information again. I kind of actually wish that the Aero Freighter had like at least three MFDs here in front of me. I guess these are nice and large for the video, video playback, but I kind of almost wish that they were a little bit smaller and I had more of them, but I digress. Off plane distance about a thousand kilometers? No, that's 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 like 974 kilometers, so that's a lot. Um, I don't think I'm going to worry about that too much. Mm, yeah, let me let me see if I can do something with it though, since it is a rather large number. So that. Eh, not having a lot of luck. Let's focus on the minimum altitude for now. Let's cut the number in half again. So it's still 60427. We're at 60413. So let's go to, what do we uh, math? F 13 days, roughly 14 days. So let's go seven more days. Let's go to 60420. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, back to real time, and everything's all messed up again, but uh, let's see if we can just continue with our, okay, so now it's plane change, mostly up, down, translation, and just because I want to know, let me keep that up here so that if I can possibly get into a I don't know how much it'll matter. It may be the case that IO rotates fast enough that uh, we'll have that just by orbiting a few orbits we'll get the plane alignment we need. So I don't know. Maybe I don't need to worry about it. So bringing down the altitude. Um, hmm. Yeah. So when I use that translation, it's bringing down the off-plane, but it's raising the altitude. I'm going to focus on the altitude. We probably want to be in relatively low, so something like that. All right, so we have um, seven days to go. Let's go forward about three and a half days. So actually just three days. Let's go to 60424. 424. And there we just lost our plan again. So I'm just trying to make sure I don't overshoot. Like I did in the video that you won't get to see. Maybe I'll make it an outtake. So let's see here. So now we need reverse translation. Let's bring you down our closest approach. Yeah, we lost our off base just to again. You know, I'm not gonna mess with that anymore. It's I'm tired of going back and forth. So something like that. Maybe even which way is this going? I don't know. You can't tell because it just oscillates, so how far away are we? We're about three days out, three and a half days out, and let's look here just out of curiosity, so that has Callisto selected, uh, target IO, although actually at this point we probably just want to reference IO, so Jupiter IO, and we're 116,000 seconds from, from periapsis. Now, that encounter velocity is killing me. 
I guess we might as well just go into the retrograde position and start firing our engines now for the next three and a half days. Okay, let's look at burn time calculator. DV, I'm just going to put in 12,000. We need a 1,000 second burn time. And we need 6,000 kilometers to break that much velocity. Man, did I mess up this encounter. Okay, I'm, I'm relearning after a long break. So, but what is our current altitude, basically? So we, we need 6,000 kilometers. But what would be, like, how far are we now from IO? So currently we're at uh, 4 gigameters. All right, so let's move forward a little bit more. Let's go forward um, one full day. So we'll go to 60425. Now, we'll, we'll, yeah, let's just start stepping forward one day at a time. 6, 7, 8. Nine, and here comes five. There's five. Okay, so we still have this huge encounter velocity. Okay, so close approach. 427.3, so we're about a little over two days out. Let's uh, take a look outside for a moment so we can appreciate the view. And let's use the celestial thing so we can see. Okay, so there's our target right there. That little dot probably probably doesn't even show up in the video playback yet. But right where my mouse cursor is at. All right, let's go back inside. So let's step forward one more day. So we'll go to 60426. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're at tomorrow. All right, so things are actually starting to hold together a little bit better now. So maybe if I refer, if I bring up the map and target the spaceport, maybe I can actually make some sense out of this off-plane distance. Probably not. It's just going to be whatever it is. Okay, minimum altitude 115. How close are we? Okay, so bring back up orbit. We are 48,000 and change seconds away. We're 1 1.7, 1 1.8 gigameters away. And we need 6,000 kilometers to break off, to, to decelerate. Okay. Let me think here. Let me, um, let me put IO up onto the HUD. And let me change over to surface. So we are 975, 900 and almost one gigameter, right? All right, let's, let's go forward like a half of a day. So 26.5. And there's five. Okay, so let's check things out. We are this stuff. Well, the good news is our distance to the base is, you know, it's lower than it has been. Get that minimum altitude pretty low. 
So massive encounter velocity. So we're probably looking at something between like 11.5 and 12. And we are 33,000 seconds from periapsis. And according to the burn time calculator, we need somewhere in the vicinity of a thousand seconds. All right, let's warp time forward. Let's bring our PET down to 15,000. Go a little faster than that. Oh my God, what happened? Why did it start going up? Okay, I did not overshoot. Why did it go up? That shouldn't happen, right? Maybe it's because of the orbit. I'm gonna go with that. Let's bring down the minimum altitude again. Apparently we lost our base information. Rinse and repeat. Map, target, spaceports, IO base, go around. And off base distance is 100 kilometers, so not terrible. Bring down the minimum altitudes, also bringing down the off base. Let's see, that's not helping. Let's go this way. Probably doesn't. I don't know how much it helps to get that to a low number at this point. But we'll do what we can. So let's go with that for now. Okay, so see, I'm super worried about overshooting. Uh, but... Let's, let me do this. Let me go through these variables here. Maybe we can zoom in a bit now. Yeah. So this is us. This is, hypothetically speaking, where we're going to rendezvous. So as long as I don't go past that, we should be fine, right? Right? And that's still a ways out. Not too far. 27.3. We're at 26.8. Okay, so this is IO coming around here. This is us coming into the orbit of uh, coming inside of the orbit of IO. One thing I think I could have done better if I had kept my orbital line closer to the altitude, I wouldn't have this much encounter velocity, but <clears throat> I have a feeling it would still be huge. Alright, we're getting pretty close, I think, so I need to look. So let me, um, translation here. Okay, actually, <clears throat> we're almost at 20 minutes, so let's, um, let me just pause. I'm just going to pick right up. I'm not going to do a save point. Let me switch camera views here. So we have made it out to the orbit of Io, we're really close. We're just minutes, tens of minutes, uh, probably may maybe a few hours away. Yeah, maybe maybe tens of minutes or a couple of hours. So this is where everything really starts happening fast. So when we come back in the next part, we will figure out how to bleed off this enormous velocity that we have so that we can um, get into orbit around Io and, and then and then we'll go from there. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next part.